Hi, hi, how are you guys doing? I know that in the last presentation or in the last video I made, I promised that this one would be the cliffhanger video where I reveal something interesting. And this one is not that video, so I'm genuinely very, very sorry. Okay. The cliffhanger video, the one that the video with the promise is happening. And as soon as I finish recording this video, I will record that one either today or tomorrow. But I promise I will record it. And in this week itself, okay, I will release that video as well along with this video. How about that? How about that? It's a little challengingly hard for me to make two videos in one week. But I'm going to do it, okay, because a promise is a promise. Anyhow, this video is about reverse cards because although i made that whole big one hour long lengthy video about the card story all it looked at was upright cards and reverse cards happen that's part of tarot that's part of the reading everywhere you go even in life you know stuff doesn't necessarily always work out in your favor reverse cards happen and so we're going to see how we're going to use the the technique that I uh, sort of taught in the previous video, which is the card story technique. So in this video, in the reverse card video, we're going to take that same technique and we're going to see how reverse cards uh, can be interpreted using that technique. How about that? So I'll talk more about this in the video because I just finished making the presentation. And, you know, putting final touches rather on the presentation. I've been making it the past couple of days. So anyhow, enjoy. See you on the other side of the presentation. Hi. So welcome to this little video presentation I've made about reversed cards. Now, the thing is, we've looked at, if you've, if you've seen my previous video, and if you haven't, I'll put the link up here on the screen uh, it's all about the card story and I've discussed how all of us are storytellers and how an image is actually worth more than a thousand words and how you can with a little bit of common sense and a little bit of Google and Wikipedia get to understand what story the image is trying to say and how we interpret it and especially how we do that in you know within the realm of the tarot cards so using that system you can very easily get into the imagery of all kinds of decks all sorts of decks and basically get to the card story now here's the thing reverse cards are also part of the story right and i had totally forgotten all about them I, I in the video that i made the last time and yes it was a long video um i i totally realized after i'd uploaded the video that i hadn't said a single word about reverse cards so this video is going to be all about looking at reverse cards because let's face it reverse cards are part of the story right the logic is pretty much the same. We're not going to learn something new except a few little tricks maybe or it's I would say a perspective that we need to adopt while looking at reverse cards because again the concept is the same. Interpreting the card image, we're going to look at the environment, the person and the symbols but only in reverse. So here we have the familiar picture of, you know, imagery that I had made in my previous video where you have the sun, the cloud, the mountain, the tree and the person, right? All of this, the environment is the mountain, the sun, cloud and tree and the person who looks like he's happy and, you know, he's got his arms raised, maybe he's dancing and all of these individual things, they're all symbols which represent something. So we had interpreted this card to say that oh it's a clear day it's a sunny day it's it's not too many clouds and it it looks like you know even though there's a lot of hardships in the distance for now he's found that tree where he can rest and relax and so this person is happy right now 
this is a very simplistic example, but you know, bear with me on this. So now, if you wanted to reverse this, if you wanted to look at this same image in reverse, what would you do? What, how would you interpret it? How would you go about? Because, you know, the thing is, in a reading, when we mix up all the cards, when we, you know, do the reading, we do get reverse cards. There's no escaping from them. Reverse cards are a part of life, just like, you know, situations that don't necessarily work out in our life. In life, we have ups and downs, and the tarot cards, basically, because they are a reflection or a mirror of who we are, reverse cards are a very integral part of what a reading has to say. I do realize that there are many people out there who think reverse cards is, I don't know, scary, or who think that reverse cards are not important or not necessary, but I beg to differ. I think that they add another dimension, another perspective to the whole card story. Because when we look at the cards in reverse, we see so many different things. In fact, there is one card, the Hanged Man card, which is very popularly, perpetually, it, it, is, the, it is the original reverse card because in, even in its upright form, it is reversed. And if you see on screen, there is yet another card, the Ten of Swords, right? Which is now reversed here. And the picture looks a little different, right? But there's, like I said, a very simple logic to interpreting them. There's really no need to be scared of these reverse cards if you know the meanings and if you know the story, basically, of the upright card. It is really not difficult to interpret the reverse cards. So, as you may see on screen, there are you know, four points that I have outlined here the opposite, right? First thing is that when you look at the reverse card, you say, you, you interpret it as the complete opposite in meaning from what the upright card says. So for example, if the Ten of Swords upright talks about a whole lot of pain, you know, seeing as to how the swords are pretty much stuck in this guy's back and he's unable to move and all that stuff, the opposite would be now, he is not in pain because if you look at the image and if you think very fluidly about what's going on in the image, you'll see or you can imagine now these swords are falling out of him. So that means he is getting released from that pain, is he not? Right. The second example would be blockage. Right. So whatever had to happen in the upright card is now being blocked or therefore not being allowed to happen. That is what the reverse card is saying. So that is one more uh, way to interpret the meaning of the reverse card. So in, in our example here with the Ten of Swords, we would say this guy was meant to be in pain. This guy was meant to suffer. This guy was or maybe the Ten of Swords is the end of all possible suffering for him. But now that is blocked for something, for some reason. It's not happening or like the third interpretation says, it might be delayed, that something is happening, something is going on, which of course in the reading other cards will tell you what it is. Something is going on due to which this experience that this man is supposed to have is not happening, it's getting delayed. Or another way to look at it is that something is missing or incomplete, that maybe certain situations need to actually happen before this situation, you know, this Ten of Swords card can become completely upright and deliver what it's supposed to deliver. I know this is a very grim sort of card to talk about in, in this situation. I don't even know why I put it there in, in the presentation to begin with. But it, it it is a classic example, really, where you can, you know, as soon as you reverse it, you can see, you can imagine the Swords sort of flying out of this guy's back and falling down. So maybe that makes it a little easier, I would say. Now, if you look at the hangman card here, which is like the original upright but reversed card, the story of the hangman is pretty much simple. If you see, he's hanging from this tree. His one leg is tied. And his second leg, if you look, I don't know, it looks like he's getting comfortable hanging upside down there. 
and as for his hands they're behind his back so we don't really know if they're tied up or not or whether he's using them to hold the tree hold himself there with the tree but ultimately we see that halo around his head there and that tells us something that as long as he's hanging there upside down He's seeing things from a very different point of view, which is giving him knowledge, which is giving him enlightenment. And I believe reverse cards are a beautiful way, actually, to look at the situations which are not necessarily all positive. But when we go through that, and that is life, right? We go through those situations which are not upright situations, but reverse situations. And we learn so much from them, right? So this hangman card here is a perfect example. So my suggestion to all students who are looking to learn tarot card meanings, don't avoid reverse cards. Learn from them. They are part of the lesson. They are part of the, you know, the message or the truth that the cards are trying to reveal to you. Your real life, if you look at it, is full of these upright and reverse situations, running away from them, escaping from them, isn't helping. Rather, you get comfortable with dealing with them, handling them and interpreting them properly. You will be able to, you know, sail through and, and, and go through life in a much more informed and better way. Right? So, let's go ahead and look at how we should you know, the simple, the same examples, the same cards that we studied in the previous uh, video, right? Just to make it simpler because, you know, then we avoid all the lengthy explanations. There are examples for going forward, but for this, you know, let's just look. The same way we interpret the previous one, the environment, he's left a lot of things behind him. He's come a long way and, you know, he's left his ego behind and he's, you know, the iris flowers. Uh, they are all about, you know, how he is getting connected with the spiritual realm. And yes, of course, we are skipping a little ahead and we're talking about the person. But he's transforming, he's changing, he's evolving into a higher or evolved spiritual being. Right? So this is your temperance card. But if you had to reverse it now, how would it look like? Now, if you see, it's right on top, you see that the water becomes more prominent than uh, the angel part of it, really. And we see that, you know, things are not necessarily working for him. We could say using the, the logic, right, the, the opposite, that, uh, you know, he's not necessarily come a long way or he's not necessarily transforming he's not necessarily evolving because he's still going back to his old egoistic way of looking at things or with the block thing we could say something is blocking his growth something is blocking his transformation something is not necessarily allowing him to find that balance and something is not necessarily allowing the transformation or the transformation is blocked or delayed right? Whatever is going on, it will happen, the transformation, the, the evolution, but there's some delay. Of course, because when we are interpreting the spread, we will see there will be other cards feeding us more information. But if let's say this was a one card spread, we would say, okay, you know, maybe he's not a, if, we, if the, the iris flower sort of stood out, you would say, oh, you know, he's not necessarily forming that powerful connection. And therefore, that transformation is delayed or blocked. Or if that crown sort of stands out to you, you'd say, oh my God, he is still, you know, he's still feeling that ego. He still, he hasn't really completely been able to let go of it. And that is blocking or delaying his transformation, right? So when you look at the card, the first thing that sort of draws you, pulls you, that is the sort of element to focus on. And yes, the other things add to the story, but that thing will tell you which direction to take it. Okay. So now, uh, the same logic with the fourth approach, something is missing or incomplete. So maybe, you know, the ego thing is missing that, or, you know, that he hasn't completely left it behind him or that divine connection is missing, or the important ingredients required for the transformation are missing, and that is causing the blockage. Okay, so now let's interpret the Hermit card 
like from the previous uh, video's example. He's standing there in the snowy environment, wearing all grey. He's neutral. He's he's sort of detached or removed from the the outer world with the closed eyes means he's looking within. The white beard talks of his age and his wisdom. And the, the six-pointed star in the lantern talks of all kinds of creative energies that he's willing and able to sort of share with anybody who comes to him asking for guidance and help. He's the wise old man, right? So now if I were to reverse him, what would happen? How would you look at it? First and foremost, the first thing that strikes me is the direction, right? When he was upright, the lamp was shining in one direction, reversed, the lamp is shining in another direction. That is something interesting that happens with cards. I've noticed that they sort of often come upright or reverse to show a direction to look at, especially with the hermit. He's shining the light now in another direction. If this were, say, in a spread, you would look now at the card to this guy's right in the direction of where the lamp is shining. Maybe he's trying to show you something there. All right. But let's go back to our four points, the four ways of looking at it. We have the opposite. So now he's not completely detached, maybe, or he's not completely wise or knowledgeable, or maybe he's just not interested in sharing his wisdom with anybody. Okay. He's not isolated. He's not by himself. He's not alone. That sort of thing. The second way of looking at it is that it's blocked. So maybe if you go to him for information or advice, you might not necessarily be able to reach him because, you know, there might be delays or hurdles in your path. Or, you know, maybe the advice that he is giving you, that wisdom, it's not necessarily sound. It could block your progress, right? Uh, the delay. Again, the same thing, you're trying to get to him, you're trying to find a way to him, but there is some delay or the wisdom or the solitude that you're looking for will come, but there's a, there's a ways, there's some time, it will not happen as soon as you think it will happen, you know, or something is missing or incomplete, maybe his knowledge is incomplete, maybe his detachment is not completely there, maybe his wisdom is not completely there. All sorts of things could not necessarily be working out with this guy in the reverse, okay? And of course, the symbols bit, right? Because in the Empress card, we saw there's just so many symbols. The crown, the pearls, the pomegranates, the trees, rivers, the, the glyph, the astrological glyph of Venus, the growing crops, all of it sort of stand for something. She's Mother Earth. She's, she's giving birth. She's surrounded by abundance and prosperity. She is the universal mother. That's the whole sort of symbolism of the empress. So she could stand for pregnancy. She could stand for childbirth. She could stand for femininity. She could stand for creativity, abundance, prosperity, growth, all of that. Or simply the mother energy, right? But if I make this card reverse, Looking, you know, using the four sort of ways where you could say, oh, you know, she's not creative. Maybe there's a problem with the pregnancy, you know, the blockage, the delay. Or if you're looking to get pregnant, there might be some delay in that. Or something is missing. Maybe you need to go check up with a doctor, right? Now, if, the, if you're looking at abundance or prosperity or creative energies, then you could say, all right, now you're not necessarily feeling really creative, okay? Or maybe the growth is not happening the way it is supposed to happen or the way you want it to happen. There are some delays, some blockages. Things will happen, but it'll take time, right? Or maybe something is missing. Maybe you need to look at what, what, what it is that you are not completely putting in the story. So, you know, like the emotional content may be missing or maybe the creative content may be missing. Anything, whatever stands out whatever symbol sort of stands out to you when you're doing the reading when you open this card go with that flow with that and see where it takes you right for your interpretation so now you use the same logic for the card story statement as you would use for the upright you would use the same logic or the same system to interpret the story for the reverse card 
Right? See, it's that simple. It's really, it's not that much work, to be honest. I really don't understand why people make it sound like, oh my God, reverse cards. It's not. There's really no, oh my God. It's just that's how it is. Upright, reverse. Go on with it. You have your notebook and pen ready? Go ahead, pause the video, write your passive and active card story statement now for temperance reverse. Okay? And then come back and let's see if I've come up with a good statement myself. Okay, so here we are. Um, for the first one, which is the which is in the passive voice, I would say. Even though he left his ego behind, he still can't find the way to transform and evolve because he is unable to let go of his attachment to it. Okay? I think this, <laughs> this interpretation was much better compared to the previous video. Huh? All right, so now the next one, which is the active voice. The angel is unable to transform or evolve because he is not able to find the balance between his, uh, you know, his practical and emotional sides. Now, I said that practical and emotional because I was just looking at the guy's feet there, you know, with one foot on land and one foot on water. He's kind of finding the balance between you know, earth being practical and water being emotional. Up, up right down, upside down, sorry, it doesn't necessarily feel like he's got that balance. It looks like he's going to fall down, right? So that's where it came from. Okay. So now let's look at the card story of our friend, the hermit, but in reverse. Again, go ahead, pause the video and come back once you've written your statement. And let's see what you've come up with, what I've come up with. Okay then, so the hermit reverse. In the cold snowy mountains, the hermit stands there, unable to share his wisdom with the person who has come uh, asking for it. Okay, or you could say the hermit is stand, hermit stands in the cold snowy mountain unable to find the peace and the solitude within him so that he could so you know so so as to reach into his inner self and seek or find the wisdom he's unable to basically find that wisdom that he's looking for in that in that snowy mountain <laughs> okay okay i think i did better let's see you guys can do better. I, I know you guys can do better. Come on. Make up a very nice statement for the hermit and put it in the comments. I really want to see what you've come up with. And so the story goes with the Empress Rivers. The crops are not growing, which don't allow the Empress to find abundance and prosperity, even though she is you know she's that creative mother and she's 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 creating because something is wrong something is missing okay i can do better than this let me see if i can do better with the active voice <laughs> the the empress is not able to connect with her inner creative powers due to which she is unable create abundance and prosperity and growth in the environment and in her life. Okay, I think that was a better version. What do you guys think? Come on, you write your own versions and I want to see them. Why don't you put them in the comment section or if you don't want to put them in the comment section, email them to me. Okay, whatever works for you, message them to me and let me know. I would be really, really happy to read what you have to say. It'll be interesting because everybody has a slightly different version and that's the fun part I think with the, with the tarot cards that everybody has a slightly different version and I think that adds more flavor, more, more perspectives, more color, more interesting things to the cards because even though 
the symbols may be common and maybe their basic meanings may be common everybody's way of interpretation is different which is i think the best part of tarot i mean otherwise why would we have all these different books right we would have just like one book and we say this is it <laughs> no we have different books because different people have different ways of looking at things and i think that's interesting and colorful and and fun okay so now this basically what we figured out is that we use the same card story statement the same method of interpretation we just have four different perspectives to sort of look at how to interpret the reverse cards of course if you have this book the complete book of tarot reversals by uh, this amazing amazing mary k greer then it's got a lot more methods uh, you know of, of looking at reverse cards but i've in my experience these four have served me well these four are have been good enough but of course this is my thing right but you can totally play around and figure out your thing like i said that's the beauty of tarot right the reverse card image is not necessarily a bad thing it's not something that you have to run away from and it's definitely going to help i think it makes the reading a little easier because then you can immediately see where things are not working vis-a-vis -vis where things are working and i think it you know so yes there are people out there who will say oh your intuition will tell you exactly what it is and which is okay i get it that happens there are certain decks where you know maybe reading it upright reverse your intuition does tell you but then having a reverse card just makes it that a little bit easier on your intuition also, I would say. So in any case, like, like I promised, there's some more examples and these are different from the examples that we looked at in the previous video. So this is something fresh and new. But again, we are going to look at reverse card image examples. And the first one is from my very favorite deck, the Japaritzi Tarot. This is the Seven of Fire. And if you look at the three points, the environment, we can clearly see this guy standing there in like maybe surrounded by fire. There's a wall of fire all around him. He's like right in the middle of it. And the person he's wearing, he looks like a normal guy. And I don't think his clothes are on fire yet. Or maybe he's wearing fire resistant clothing. Who knows? But he doesn't look, if you look at him, if you look at his face and his expressions, I don't think he looks like he's worried about the fire. I don't think that the fire bothers him so much. Ah, it's interesting actually. I've been sort of binge watching Game of Thrones and, and I'm, I'm looking at Daenerys Targaryen doing her thing with her dragons in the fire and everything. And I, and I look at this card and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> So I'm, I'm only still up on season two. So don't ask me too many questions yet. <clears throat> so now if we make this guy reverse, how would you interpret it? Um, now fire here is again very symbolic. Fire could mean passion. Fire could mean troubles, the way it is surrounding him. It's all around him, right? So... While in the upright, he looked pretty okay standing there surrounded by the fire. In the reverse, also, I think he looks pretty okay. But if you're looking at it reverse, we would say that maybe he is not comfortable standing there surrounded by some, you know, the troubles. Maybe the fire represents troubles and, you know, some difficulties. And he's not necessarily in a happy place there. Or... There is some kind of a blockage. He's meant to maybe cross that wall of fire and go on the other side. Or maybe this is his trial by fire, right? And he's supposed to go through it and come out on the other side. And then he will be victorious and everything, you know, mother of dragons and all that. But then this guy, it's this in the reverse card, it's blocked. So something is not letting him, maybe he's afraid or maybe he, you know, that or like the third one says it's there's a delay. Something is not allowing him to go through that experience. All right. 
and the fourth one something is missing or incomplete i think all these meanings sort of tie into each other or one thing leads to the other but here you know something is missing something is incomplete maybe that fire is not potent enough or powerful enough for him to be feel you know said challenged and so he doesn't want to cross it yeah that could be it what is your interpretation of this card in the reverse mind you hmm? share it in the comments below Let's look at another example and this one is from another favorite deck of mine this is called the omega land tarot deck and this the theme of the deck is that you know I, I think i did a review of this deck it was that was a pretty long video too and the theme of this deck is that you know the the, the whole world as we know it has collapsed and so now we are living i mean the, thankfully there are no vampires and zombies in this one but we're living in a world where everybody has to pretty much scrounge it to survive. And this is the card from that deck. And we have an eight of cups there. And so we see all the eight bottles of water. And this guy sitting in the back of a van. And he's gone. He's, they're going somewhere. They're leaving somewhere maybe. Right? Eight of cups is all about leaving but now this in this picture especially if you if you compare it with the image of the eight of cups of the right away where the guy leaves the cups behind and goes forward this guy's carrying his cups with him that's that slight difference as he moves he takes the cups with him the cups in this within the theme of this deck represent water sustenance life really right his clothes the way he's dressed up that that little purple haversack there that is, you know, that's all he possesses. Those are his things. Those are his possessions. And he's somehow managed to get in the back of that van. Maybe he knows the guy who drives the van or maybe he's a hitchhiker. One way or the other, he has received some sort of help or cooperation from another person. And he's a survivor. You can clearly see that. And he has the life-giving water, which... When you're in the middle of somewhere where, you know, like there's no water, water, you know, you get thirsty. So, yes, he finds help. He's able to move and he's able to get on with things in his life. And he has the ability to sustain himself. He has the resources required to take care of himself in this a journey where he's sort of going from one stage of life to the next. That would be the sort of interpretation I would give to this card. But in the reverse, wow, look at it. All those bottles, they'll probably fall down from the back of the van there. He'll probably fall down from the back of the van. So maybe he's, he's in a spot of trouble or he may be getting into some trouble there. Be a little creative. Someone will, you know, you know, maybe, I don't know, go crazy. Someone tries to take advantage of him and rob him of that water, maybe. Hmm? Or the opposite, he's not able to find uh, that sort of help, that sort of cooperation. And so he's not able, so he's blocked. He's not able to move forward. He's not able to uh, go to the next stage of his journey. So there's a delay, right? There's something that is delaying that next part. Maybe, you know, this, the, the person who gave him the lift is, is, is just taking his own sweet time. He's not starting the van and they're not moving yet. Or something is missing or incomplete. Something is going on behind the scenes. Now, when I look at this card in the reverse, I just, that was treachery was the first thing that came to mind. Of course, you have to bear in mind that literally, Half an hour ago, I finished watching season two of Game of Thrones. That would be the first thing on my mind when I looked at this picture, it just popped up. So think about it. What would your interpretation be with the Eight of Cups reverse, especially within the context of this deck? Now let's look at another example. And this one is also a favorite interesting deck of mine. It's called the Steampunk Tarot. So obviously the themes are steampunk, which is again fun and interesting. And here she is driving, or I wouldn't say driving, she's riding a, uh, a bicycle. It's one of the, I, I really have no idea what it's called. 
But this bicycle, she's not riding it on the road, mind you. Is it is it water that she is riding it on? Looks like it, doesn't it? And there's the symbol of the lemniscate going through the wheels there, like light. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's lit up like in neon pink there. So there's electricity, there's energy that's transforming and changing form and going from one form to the other. So maybe as she rides that bike over water, she is generating or creating energy on a consistent basis. She's doing that endlessly as she does that, as she, as she goes there. So whatever actions now, if I were to, of course, this is all very metaphorical. So if I were to kind of bring that interpretation down to very practical sort of realm, I would say that she keep, whatever she does, because she has to keep those wheels in motion, otherwise it ain't gonna move, right? So whatever it is that she keeps doing, her work keeps her moving forward and sustains her and helps her traverse through maybe difficult, you know, the difficult waters or difficult period of her life there. So, you know, that, that could be one interpretation there. And as we reverse this card, clearly we see that she, the water is going to dominate the whole picture. That no matter how hard she uh, sort of keeps riding the bike or no matter how much she rides the bike, it's not going to work. It's not going to help her situation. It's not going to make things better for her. So it's, it's really, she's just fighting a, I would say, a lost battle. That's the feeling that I'm getting when I look at this picture here. What about you? When I look, what do you think when you look at this picture reverse? What, what do you think is going to happen? Okay. Now, here's the thing. These were just examples, but these are fun and interesting examples. And it, again, like I said, there's really not much hardship that you have to endure if you were to look at reverse cards. Really, there isn't. So stop being scared of them. Just, just no point being scared of them. There's just no point worrying about them. Okay, so you can use this same process, the same card story process to look at the card, both upright and reversed. Okay. Hey, so what did you think about the reverse cards? I mean, what were your interpretations? Go ahead. Put them in the comment section below, right? I mean, come on, tell me what you think. I need to know. And here's another thing. This is a book. This is a book called The Complete Book of Tarot Reversals. Um, when I was learning tarot back, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, this is one book I picked up. And really, really, this one is amazing. It's written by Mary Kay Greer. And it is a brilliant, brilliant book to have especially if you want to go deep into reverse cards because like i said they're nothing to be worried about they're nothing to be scared about there's nothing to there's no point saying oh they don't exist and you know because i don't look at them they do not exist that is just that's not how it works cards get reversed all the time situations in life get reversed all the time and this is a good book to have in case you want to study up or read up a little bit more on reverse cards and you can essentially now with this, the video presentation that I just did, you can very easily interpret reverse cards as well using that same card story technique. So really, it's not that hard. Okay. Hopefully, I will see you again this week because like I said in the beginning of this video, I will be uploading yet another video and that will have something really brilliant and exciting and as I can see it approaching I can sense the whole anticipation thing happening for me anyhow <sighs> so I really hope that I will see you guys soon and that we will launch a new adventure with this card story <laughs> technique sorry excuse me Sorry, I've been drinking too much coffee. With this card story technique, we're going to take that and we're going to launch ourselves into an adventure. All right. So I will see you again soon this week with yet another video that will explain what I'm talking about. And yes, 
before I leave, haha, do not forget to click the like button, subscribe if you want to take, you know, get notifications of future videos. And of course, share this video on Facebook and Twitter and wherever you like. Totally. Go for it. See you.